This is the second section of the roots of polynomials, and here we're going to look at the roots of a cubic equation. So we've already looked at the roots of um, a quadratic. We have similar rules for the roots of a cubic. So a cubic is going to be where we have something x cubed, a, uh, something b times x squared plus c times x plus d equal to zero and the roots of this cubic are going to be alpha beta and we go to the next letter in the greek alphabet gamma and the sum of those roots so alpha plus beta plus gamma that's negative b over a so that's the same as the sum of the roots for a quadratic then we have well actually let's do the products of the roots alpha beta gamma so alpha times beta gamma, times gamma is negative d over a now for the quadratic it was just c over a so it's slightly different and then we're going to be looking at the product of the root pairs so alpha times beta that's one pair multiplied here's the second pair multiplied and here is the third pair multiplied so the sums of the products basically and that is c over a yeah so we now are furnished with these rules for cubics and we're going to be doing something very similar to what we did with the quadratics so here are our three roots of our cubic alpha beta and gamma so i can see a b c and d here which i'll write down first a equals 2 b equals 3 c is negative 4 and d is 2 and we're not actually solving the equation we're working out the sums the products and one or two other things as well so in part a i want to find what alpha plus beta plus gamma is alpha plus beta plus gamma and we know that that is negative b over a so negative b over a is going to be negative 3 over 2 okay so that's done easy enough no simplifying required the next thing is the sum of these root pairs or the product of these the um, pairs of roots and now we know that that is c over a so that's going to be negative 4 over 2 which simplifies to negative 2 we just put some bubbles around these answers so we don't lose them like that uh, c is just their product alpha beta gamma and we know that that's negative d over a so that's going to be negative 2 over 2 so that's just negative 1 and the last one d i've got 1 over alpha plus 1 over beta plus 1 over gamma now there isn't a rule for that but we do something very similar to what we did to the quadratics which is we're going to give them all the same denominator so we can put them together so i'm going to multiply the first fraction the top and bottom by beta gamma so times that by beta gamma the second fraction i'm going to multiply the top and the bottom by alpha gamma times by alpha gamma so basically the denominator of the other two and the last one i'm going to times the top and the bottom by alpha beta times by alpha beta so it's going to look a bit messy but it's fun algebra just multiplying out stuff so we let we are left with beta gamma over alpha beta gamma plus alpha gamma alpha gamma over alpha beta gamma alpha not a then the last one is going to be alpha beta over alpha 
beta gamma. So what do I have? Right, I actually have, if I just change the order, alpha beta plus uh, beta alpha plus um, alpha gamma or gamma alpha, as they put it there, over alpha beta gamma. So the product pairs, which I worked out in part B, was negative 2. And the product was negative 1, which just leaves me with an answer of 2 once I work that out. Okay, the roots of the cubic equation are given as alpha equals that beta. Oh, so now we've got complex roots. So maybe this one is a little bit more complex. Uh, find integer values for A, B, C, and D. Right, so we are going to be using these rules here to help us do it. Now we're going to do what we did before, which is to divide the cubic through by the coefficient of x cubed. So we only have three unknowns instead of four. So I'll take this, divide everything by a, and I will have um, x cubed plus b over a x squared plus c over a x plus d over a equals zero. Now what you'll notice is b over a, let's color code this, you see this appears in the first one. Um, the C over A appears in the second one. No change of sign required. And the D over A appears in the last one. So we need to flip the sign. That makes it really easy to work out what these numbers are. And just like the last one, we need integer values. So we'll then multiply everything through to change those coefficients into whole numbers. So let's start by getting um, B over A. So alpha plus beta plus gamma is equal to negative B over A. Right, so alpha 1 minus 2i plus beta, which is 1 plus 2i plus gamma, which is 2. So we'll add all of those together. So you get 1 plus 1 plus 2, which is 4. The i parts cancel out, so we end up with 4. So 4 is negative b over a, which means b over a is negative 4. Done. So it's not that difficult, actually. Right, the next one, c over a. Well, c over a is alpha, beta, plus beta, gamma, plus alpha gamma. Okay, we know that that equals C over A. So um, that's going to be, so it's going to be a bit of multiplying out here. 1 minus 2i, so this is the alpha beta part, times by 1 plus 2i. Okay, so that's alpha beta. Then I've got beta gamma which is going to be basically 2 times 1 plus 2i. And then the last bit is going to be alpha gamma, which is going to be 2 times by 1 minus 2i. So let's simplify that all out. So that will give us, well, from the first sets of brackets, we can do the sum of two squares. So that's going to be 1 squared plus 2 squared, which is going to be 5. We don't need to multiply it out. OK, and then we're going to be adding uh, 2 and 4i. And then we're going to be adding 2 and taking away 4i. 2 and taking away 4i. 
So if we simplify all of that, what happens is the four i's cancel out. And we're just ended up with five plus two plus two, which is nine. OK, so what does that mean? That means that C over A equals nine. Then the last one, the D over A, well, alpha, beta, gamma, the product is negative D over A. So that means we need to do uh, one minus two I times by one plus two I and that gets times by two. Right. So that's basically going to be the sum of two squares, one squared plus two squared, five, five times two, which is ten. OK, so that actually means that D over A equals negative 10. Remember, it's negative D A, D over A. Right now we can put in these coefficients. So we've got X cubed plus B over A, which is negative 4, so negative 4 X squared. Plus C over A, now C over A is 9, so plus 9 X. Um, then we have uh, D over A, which is negative 10 equals 0. OK, so in this case, we didn't need to multiply back up. They're all integers anyway. So let's write these down. Coefficient of A is 1. Coefficient, sorry, coefficient of X cubed is 1. Coefficient of X squared is negative 4. C is 9. And D is 10 or negative 10. So maybe we'll write that down as our final answer. Right, you should now be able to do exercise 4B on pages 58 to 59 of the textbook.